been set up to be. We talked about this match right from the start. 16th versus 18th. People right around the country want to know who's going to get the four points first. We're about to find out. It's a little after 3.30pm on May 12, 2012. A chilly autumn afternoon in the nation's capital. We're seven rounds into the AFL season as the league's two newest teams clash for the first time at Monica Oval in Canberra. 8,603 fans, decked out mostly in orange, watch nervously as the Greater Western Sydney Giants break from their three-quarter time huddle. They trail by just four points to the Gold Coast Suns. Neither side have won a game yet this season. Definitely not to look at it on paper, we thought we were a very good chance of beating it. Oh, yeah, we were real confident that um, we'd get over the top of them and coming into the last quarter we knew that it was going to come down to like every man standing sort of thing and everyone just gave everything that they had. Yeah, definitely. I think every week we go in there and think, yeah, we're a chance to win. Um, and then especially with the Suns, you know, they're, they're a new club like us and we thought, yeah, this is just as good as theirs and if we played our best footy then we could definitely win. Um, I think even before the game they said only three people backed us in the paper and yeah, really, I, I, the whole vibe during the whole week at the club was we could definitely go there and win. There is a lot riding on this result, but for four of the country's most talented teenagers, this journey began six months earlier, on November 24, 2011, draft day. Welcome to this historic night in AFL history, in Sydney history and in the history of the Greater Western Sydney Giants. We are here to celebrate not just a landmark night for the newest AFL club in the competition, the Greater Western Sydney Giants, but the coming together and the first presentation of the inaugural Giants AFL team. Tonight, the Giants have selected an unprecedented 11 of the first 14 selections, an historic first for any AFL club. You are the game. You are going to take this game of Aussie rules to an unbelievable height. So um, I'm Stephen Cornelio from um, Perth, Western Australia. Drafted from Swan District Football Club. I'm 18 and was uh, taken at Selection 2 by the Greater Western Sydney Giants. I remember Luke Power after he first met Stephen Cornelio and said he's a special kid. And he is a special kid. He's, um, he's not just a special talent. He's just got great care for, for people. He's respectful. He ticks every box as a great footy player should be, and um, we're really lucky to have him. Uh, I think, I think uh, a pretty rough idea uh, earlier on, earlier on in the season in my under-18s year. But um, I suppose at, at the same time you still want to play well and do well with your representative footy and your club footy. So I think you always had it in the back of your, back of your mind that you might end up here, but try not to look too far ahead. I think and definitely from externally. Someone could have seen as having a lot of pressure on you, but once you come into an AFL system, everyone and all the draftees, especially on an even even spread, and you got to prove yourself to uh, to our coaches. Uh, Liam Sumner, at in his page, went picked number ten in the draft, and off with Sandy and Dragons. Yeah, Liam's good. He's a he's a cheeky um, cheeky one. He sort of loves his surfing. The good thing about Liam is he's so open and um, you know got so much energy. He actually will come and talk to you about how he's feeling. He's got amazing talent. I mean, I think everything he does, he's a great skateboarder, surfer. Um, but he's that type of um, enthusiasm that you need around the club. You know, that sort of bit of a spark, loves a bit of a practical joke. So, um, uh, yeah, he's, he's developing really well. I had a bit of an idea, but I wasn't too sure because I didn't know whereabouts I was going to go in the draft. Oh, I was just nervous, really. Um, I wanted to come here from the start. So I knew a few of the uh, boys for the AIS and just from back at home, but I just wanted to come here. That's the club I wanted to come to. Taylor Adams, 18 years old from Geelong, uh, number 13 in the draft. Taylor's been enormous. Um, really just, he had to work really hard. He had, he had a few injury issues um, when he first got here. And to watch his teammates actually where he thought they were getting in front of him, he got that frustration and he had that homesickness. I mean, the first couple of months, it was a real battle for, uh, for Taylor because all he wanted to do was get out and play with his mates. His best mates, Devin Smith. Yeah, Dev, they're inseparable. I mean, they've grown up together. Um, it's bizarre, you know, normally when you get drafted, you know, your mate goes 
to Melbourne, one might go to Perth, one go to Adelaide. These, we were lucky enough to have a lot of early picks. Um, and not only have they been drafted to the same club, but they're living together. So um, I suppose that would have made their transition a lot easier. I'm Devin Smith, I'm from Geelong. Uh, I got drafted pick 14 this year. Devin's just a, a really mature 18 year old. I mean, you just you sit down, you would have thought he's played 100 games already, just the way he talks. Um, again, he has a great care for this club, and he's only been here for six months. Obviously, having Devin Smith up here is pretty much my best mate from down Geelong, so uh, moving up with a mate was, it was a lot easier than um, coming up by myself. But yeah, transition was pretty good, and um, yeah, enjoyed it so far. So. No, I actually didn't. I actually didn't think I'd be coming here, but I was pretty glad that I did. I was uh, lucky enough to be drafted with my best mate, so yeah, I couldn't, couldn't ask for a better start. While November's draft was the realisation of a football dream for all of the players, it was only the first step in their new lives. The majority of the club's 49 listed players are not only embarking on football careers for the first time, but are also leaving home and moving into state. And relocating dozens of 17 and 18 year olds is no small task. Aside from their football development, the club is faced with many lifestyle considerations. And that's where welfare manager Craig Lambert comes in. Probably the most important role is to try and relocate the players to uh, Greater Western Sydney, uh, make sure that's, uh, they're comfortable here with all their living arrangements um, and I'm lucky enough my wife's employed as well with the club um, in the welfare role to help you learn how to pay bills, how to learn how to cook, maintain their apartments and, and more importantly just make sure they enjoy the experience and they never want to leave and uh, that's not just the players but also their families. Picturesque Breakfast Point, 16 kilometres from the Sydney CBD is home to all but one of the giant squad. The draftees and older recruits occupy luxurious two and three bedroom apartments, living with teammates carefully chosen to match common interests and personalities. Um, so the decision to go to Breakfast Point was, I reckon it's a masterstroke. Once you get to Breakfast Point, uh, it's a beautiful spot. And the feedback we get from not just the players, but the parents uh, about how safe it feels for their kids has been enormous. They're, they're going to have their home sickness. They're going to miss mum, dad, their brothers and sisters, their best mates. Um, but our ability to be able to work them through that process, sort of help the, these young players work through those first couple of years, because they're tough years. No matter who you are, it's a big step to move out of home and a plane ride away from your family. And no one at the Giants is underestimating just how tough it is. I think their, their role is just, um, you know, to, to do the stuff that your mum and dad usually do for you. So um, just help me with cooking and cleaning, just the house stuff that you wouldn't, you wouldn't usually do when you're at home with mum and dad and your family. So, um, yeah, they play, they play a massive role in looking after us boys, um, just in little things and then with the, with the big issues that they take control of. But, yeah, they're, they're really good. You know, moving up, it's always exciting and it was always going to be exciting. And, you enjoy, enjoy it all the time, but you're always going to miss your family and miss your friends and miss where you come from, so it's probably the hardest thing I've, I've found. Yeah, move over, move over yeah, it's been, been pretty great. And obviously there was uh, 11, 11 players drafted from Victoria, only one from me, so, but that, the, they've been good. And uh, even though it's a long, long flight, it's, um, I'm, I'm enjoying it here in Western Sydney. And, no, we've got a pretty, uh, pretty good welfare, welfare system here. And, um, being drafted with so many boys your same age and even the boys from last year who were originally here, um, you were on the same boat pretty much. And yeah, I think I think everyone, it's natural to, to be a little bit uh, homesick, but I think having such a young group and like I said, lucky I've got Taylor with me so we can just talk to each other and you've got older guys who've been through it all together and flying family up and no, it's been pretty good so far. It's just uh, different for us because it's a new club starting, like uh, when, if you went to a Collingwood or someone who's uh, really up there, you get in the club, you'd be a bit, uh, bit, bit timid about your approach to seeing your older guys and that. But up here, it's pretty good to have Chad Corns, Luke Power, them sort of guys, because they, they sort of just, they're just sort of like an older buddy and they just guide you along the way. Yeah, well, living at Brecky Point brings the team like a lot closer and stuff like that. And it's good because we're not all in the same like apartment. We're all spread out throughout the um, environment, so. Yeah, I guess it's good you're still living here. Well, I didn't think like all the friendships would become as strong as what they were, but I guess one of the main things are friendships, 
um, how professionally it's been done, everything's been run. Um, we've just gone basically into this, the same routines as normal clubs, I guess. And that same routine means months of tough and gruelling training to prepare the young giants for the hardened bodies they will encounter at a professional level. If you work together, rather than just going to self-preservation mode, try to just get through this and just finish it, you will be nowhere near as effective. Find out something about yourself. The last thing, your mind will be telling you to stop long before your body actually has to. See yourself push yourself to a new level in this session now. I want to see something special from each of you. Righto, let's go. No boy, no boy. Well, all they do is they just train, eat and sleep. That's what they do. When, when their first year, it's incredible. It's, um, they're, they're drafted, they're full of beans, they're excited because that's been their dream since they were probably four or five. And, and all of a sudden, they work out how hard the training load is. Um, and it's amazing to watch these kids just go through pre-season and, and they get home, they have their meals, um, they go to sleep about 8 o'clock, they wake up the next morning at 6. Um, it's, it's tough, but it gives them an understanding of why great players have a longevity in this game. It's about hard work. Yeah, I think just the, just the day to day uh, thing of playing AFL footy, I mean, you obviously have your like, tough training sessions and, and stuff back home, but when you're doing it day in, day out in, in pre season, especially, it's a bit of a, bit of a shock first up. And, that, that's probably the main thing that got to me. Well, probably getting through the pre-season, um, just the training loads, it, it was pretty pretty tough, but um, apart from that, just, just um, getting used to it, getting up every morning, going to bed. Going through the first pre-season, I've been told it's the toughest, but um, I don't think you get too much easier on going through other ones, but yeah. Yeah, I guess um, pre-season was, was pretty tough. Um, you know, you, you go from, uh, a TSC Cup club where you train three times a week and it's just yeah, it's pretty low key and then you go five days a week where it's full on um, so it's it's pretty taxing and you're always fatigued um, and then being injured for the second half of pre-season was you know a bit frustrating and took its toll but uh, yeah getting out there now is just it's been really good and you know it's been worth the wait. On March 24, pre-season training became a distant memory as the Greater Western Sydney Giants took their first steps onto the ANZ Stadium turf. Don't and ever let any club or player dominate you at a ball, at a stoppage, in the air or on the ground. That is the essence of simple, bloody, basic football. Now let's get it going. <laughs> They steeled themselves to face one of the AFL's toughest teams, their new crosstown rivals, the Sydney Swans, in the opening game of the season. Here we go, umpire Matt Stevick about to put it in the turf to get the GWS history underway. Giles the Ruckman. That night was the first step for the AFL's 18th team and the realisation of a lifelong dream for many of their young players. Opportunity for Ward on his non-preferred side. The first goal kicker for the GWS is their co-captain. Among the 22 on field were just five who had played senior football before. 17 of the players were first gamers and 14 teenagers. With number one draft pick Jonathan Patton out of action with injury, the eyes of the footballing world were on Stephen, the number two pick. Yeah, it was obviously a yeah, massive, massive thrill. And I mean, you dream about it since you were a kid. And, um, yeah, it was fantastic. I had all my family up here and uh, a few friends and cousins from back home. So, um, but yeah, it was obviously a massive um, thrill playing against Sydney in Sydney. And um, yeah, it's something you look back on at the end of your career and remember. It was a night that football followers everywhere got their first glimpse of draftees like Devon, one of the most highly sought after talents in the country. It was nerve wracking, but um, yeah, it's probably our best game so far, so I yeah, loved it. It's funny when you think about it now, you just, you really, it's been your childhood dream and whatnot, but you don't really, you, at the moment, it's just, uh, you think about every week, taking every week at a time, so you wouldn't, you don't really think about it as achievement or anything as yet. So. Probably the biggest challenge is that you're, you're no longer the, the big fish in a little pond, you're, you're now out in the open sea, like, Everyone's, no one's a, a bad player and everyone's on the same level, so you've just got to do that little bit extra or do that little bit, bit more exciting to, to, be, to be noticed. 
But this was a bittersweet night for Taylor and Liam, who were yet to get their opportunity and had to watch their teammates and now friends realise their dreams. Yeah, it's, it's tough but exciting for, for all your mates because you, know, you form great friendships up here and it's just good to see you know, guys like Deb and, and Toby and Steve and that to you know, play really good footy in the ones. Um, you know, it gives you confidence that when you get your shot you can go in there and you know, have, a, have a good crack. I guess first, first of all is get, get a game and then try to hold my spot in, in the seniors. Um, but yeah, just trying to look too far forward, just trying to get that, that first game you know, on the line all the time. It's not really hard, it's just more... Um, just, it's just new, really. It's just um, all I'm expecting. It's real... Um, it's determining, really. It just makes you want to get out there and try it and see how you go. But they didn't have to wait long. Four weeks later, Taylor got his chance, making his debut in the Giants' Round 5 clash against the Western Bulldogs in Canberra. It was an impressive debut, with the number 30 scoring a goal just minutes into the match. It ends up now with Adams, outside 50, has a ping, or kicks it the goal. It's raining goals at Monica, and they're giant goals. Yeah, really exciting. Um, it's a bit surreal and a bit, bit of a blur, but... Yeah, I had a, had a ball and yeah, it was just great to get, get a game under the belt. The following week, Liam was picked to play in front of his family and friends when the Giants took on league heavyweights Carlton in their first ever Melbourne game. Oh, his first game, Sumner already has one kick. This is his second. Can he capitalise and show his more experienced counterparts how to do it? Yes, he can. Uh, well done. Oh, leading up to it was really, really nerve-wracking, but... Um, Running out with the boys, it, that sort of just like leaves your head and after you get your first touch, uh, you settle down and, and get used to the game really. But, uh, just squeezed in I reckon. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but I was real happy to get a goal under my belt. One week on and it's May 12. All four are at Mounica Oval as a three-quarter time siren goes. Stephen has had perhaps his best game yet for the Giants. Devon has kicked two goals, including the first of the game just minutes in. Taylor has been working tirelessly through the midfield and Liam Gold before being substituted at half time. Because we've got a great last corner coming up. We do have a fantastic game of footy here. We've got a real competition happening. There's just four points in it and the game is up for grabs. And he does it! Giants hit the lead! Almost throws it back to Trelaw. Trelaw throws it on the boot and the little man with a giant goal! to Giles, and Giles, the big man with the biggest kick of his life, they've gone mad at Monica. <laughs> Cameron, he's been quiet, but he's not quiet now, he's loud, it's getting louder. This for the icing on the cake, he kicks truly and they celebrate an amazing day. I won't make the line, big leap over the top, Chad Corns, and won't he love this. He is loving everything. Look at Sheeds. Well done, Choco. Well done, Sheeds. Kevin. A historic occasion. The GWS Giants have won their first ever game in the AFL. What a moment for them. What a gigantic four points. Oh, they sprint off the bench. They hug. They embrace. The relief on these boys' faces. They've worked so hard. They've been together for two and a bit years. Yeah, it was fantastic being uh, part of the first win. It's obviously, it's been a big pre-season and uh, not many people like thought would win a game this season. Um, so, uh, yeah, coming up against Gold Coast, we were pretty confident and, and uh, it was a, obviously a highlight of your life that you remember for the rest of it. To get our first win in the AFL and to be a part of it, I guess everything goes down in history. So. To be part of all that, it's just real, real exciting and it's a good memory to have for the rest of my life. Yeah, it was really good, um, really exciting for the club and our little footstep we've taken um, towards becoming a better team and that was sort of sort of my goal um, to be able to play in the first win uh, for the club, so yeah, I was really happy. Yeah, it was obviously a very memorable moment and probably one of the best games I've ever played in, yeah. It was amazing, um, you know, to see the to see the staff, to see the players embrace the reserves who were there who played earlier, to see the families, um, you know, all of us come together. A lot of people worked really hard to get us to a position to have our first win. We've got a long way to go, we know that as a club. 
It's clear that the Giants will be pushing for more wins this season and the club's young stars are not just thinking short term. Uh, look, you just take on board what they say, it's criticism, so you just not try to think about it, but in the next few years we'll be a good team. We've all come together pretty well now, and you can see by our games we're real competitive, so I guess that's just something to show that in the next few years um, it will stick with us and we'll become like a real good team. And we're a team, we're a young team, but way too all we'll just get a bit of experience into us and we'll take it on. I think it's a, Massive learning experience for all of us, and I think, oh, hopefully, winning uh, week in, week out instead of losing, and um, and yeah, hopefully four or five years down the track, um, yeah, hopefully deep into into finals in September. Yeah, um, you know, it's not often you know, you're a new team in the AFL um, with us in Gold Coast. It's yeah, what a, a great opportunity uh, to develop the young boys and in four or five years be you know a real, real powerhouse of the competition. So. Whatever has happened so far, there is no doubt the players are looking to the future. They know why they came here and they know what they want. You've got no better place to be but here where everyone's achieving, uh, trying to strive towards that, that big goal and if you don't want to play in a premiership, I don't think anyone would be here at the moment. So, yeah. Well hopefully if, um, if we can keep everyone together, I see this being an incredibly powerful football club. They're a special group and um, we're looking forward to the future.